Hey guys, welcome back to Ed's Garage. This is just a real quick update about the Chevy Spark electric battery teardown. So I've been doing some charging and some testing and I've got some numbers to go over. So the first thing I did was I actually charged up module number one uh, and then I used my load tester to figure out what sort of uh, remaining capacity module one had. And basically what I found was uh, out of the original three kilowatt hours, it was giving me 2.4 kilowatt hours, which actually tracks perfectly because that entire battery pack uh, was degraded about 25%. So 25% of three kilowatts actually works out to 2.4 kilowatt hours. Um, so that, that makes sense. So that was cool. Got that charged up, did the full discharge, recharged it again, uh, but this time I charged it to about 80%. So it's now going to sit yeah, at 80%. I did the same thing with module number three and I got just a hair over 2.4 kilowatt hours. It's about 2.4, um, roughly uh, at 39.4 amp hours. So very, very similar results on module three. Uh, then I did module five and it got fully charged and it's currently discharging. Uh, we've got uh, 1.7 kilowatt hours so far and it's still at 59.7 volts, so it's doing fine. By the way, guys, I'm discharging these uh, at uh, 2.62 amps or 156, well, roughly 160 to 180 watts of draw. It depends on how high the battery voltage is, so as the battery sort of goes down, the, the, volt, the, the wattage goes down a little bit. Um, and that's obvious because the amperage remains the same, but the voltage goes down so that the total draw changes. Uh, anyway, so I've also got um, module two and four uh, recharged there, or sorry, this was the interesting thing actually. So this, this one here is the bad one, as you can see, it's currently charging. Uh, module four is already charged up. It needs to be discharged still for a discharge test. Module two is the weird one. It was still fully charged. So I'm not really sure how to explain that. Um, of all of the six packs, module six had the lowest charge. It was a little bit low um, by like half a volt over, you know, over, over the other ones. Well, maybe a bit more than half a volt. More like one volt, actually, one and a half volts around there. I can't remember. It, it was on the first video. Um, but module two was at 67 volts and all the other batteries were at 56 volts, all the other modules. So, I don't know how to explain that, but I'm pretty excited to test module two on the, the, the discharge test because then I'm kind of hoping that it actually has closer to its original three kilowatt hours of, of power. So that was an interesting one. Now, the other thing that's interesting and maybe somebody else can explain this to me. Um, so this is the bad battery or what I think is a bad battery based on the fact that this cell right here was a half a volt lower than all the other ones. Um, and all of the uh, cell packs here are all really, really dark. So this particular cell right here was at three volts, whereas all the other ones were at about three and a half. They were 3.46, 3.47, 3.45, that sort of thing. Um, but now as I'm charging, I'll show you here, we have on this one, it's at four volts now. And the one right next to it, 3.98, 3.99. I'll go back to this one here, 4.01. So they're, they're slowly balancing as it charges. But what's weird is that this one went from being a half a volt lower than all the other ones to immediately within about 20 minutes of charging, it went to a slightly higher voltage than all the other ones. Now they're slowly sort of starting to catch up with each other. Um, and it's slowly starting to balance as it charges. So I am waiting for a, uh, a BMS to balance all these batteries properly. Uh, but for now, as long as I can get them roughly around 80%, I'm, I'm happy. So I am doing a full charge right now, then a full discharge, and then I'm bringing them back up to uh, 80%. So this, uh, this one right here is currently on the discharge. I've got two other ones that are done and two that still need to be, or three that still need to be done. So um, yeah, that's where we're at. Just kind of testing all these batteries out. Uh, but yeah, I thought it was kind of weird that, um, module two had full power on a battery pack that was basically empty. 
uh, nearly dead, module two was still fully charged and module six was just slightly lower and then modules one, three, four, and five were all almost exactly the same. Weird. So yeah, way out of balance, especially module two in comparison to the rest. Okay, after several days of charging and discharging, I've now got all the figures uh, and I'm happy to report that most of the batteries are actually running down to pretty much the exact same amount. Um, so batteries one through five all uh, discharged 2400 kilowatts of energy uh, before getting down low enough that I didn't want to take them down any further. I probably could have gone down a bit further. So basically I had um, each 60 volt pack going down to 54 volts. So 54 divided by 16, whatever that works out to, is the lowest cell voltage that I took it down to. I think that's 3.2 volts, I think. Um, just to kind of protect them, I didn't want to drain them too far. So I think successfully 2400 watt hours out of each battery is pretty awesome. Um, the only one that was less was indeed uh, battery module number six, and it only got 22.3 uh, kilowatt hours or 36.4 amp hours. So unfortunately that battery is the worst of the bunch. However, even that battery at 2.23 kilowatt hours is still very, very usable. That's a lot of energy. To give you an idea of just how much energy that is, I could run this refrigerator for about 12 hours on just that one failed battery. So obviously the freezer uses a little bit more energy. Um, so even if it's twice as much, that's still six hours on one little battery. So if I absolutely needed to in an emergency or uh, whatever, um, I could you know, use a couple of these battery packs to, to keep those things running for quite a long time um, in a you know, power outage situation or whatnot. Uh, so these batteries are definitely not useless, including number six, which was uh, the worst of the bunch. Um, now, if I was using it for like an off-grid thing and running a small refrigerator and a small TV, I could do that all day off one of those batteries, probably more than one day, probably a couple of days. Um, so 2200 kilowatt or 2200 watt hours is quite a, quite a bit of energy storage. Um, so I'm going to wrap this video up there though. Uh, stay tuned for future projects. Of course, I do have a balancer coming for these batteries. Uh, unfortunately, I realized after buying the balancer and the charger that I probably won't keep the batteries in this, in this configuration. Um, 60 volts is kind of a weird number to, to utilize. There's not a lot of inverters out there that work off 60 volts. Um, so I may change some configurations on some of these batteries to 12 volt configuration, uh, which would actually involve, you know, not using all the cells, even if I tried doing some of them in parallel because you can't really get 12 volts out of 16 cells so that doesn't really work. So I'm gonna have to do some, some uh, research to figure out what the best way to do that is. Uh, but anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, comment below if you have any suggestions on what I can use these modules for. Um, my plan is camper trailer, off-road truck, um, battery backup for the house, my wife's scooter. Uh, one of these batteries will have to be configured for 48 volts. Um, and then various other little things. If you have some ideas for projects, by all means, let me know. I'm even thinking of maybe putting one in my wife's shed and having it uh, kept to uh, charged up with solar energy so she can have some lights in there and charge her batteries and whatnot for her, you know, lawn equipment and whatnot. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching and uh, until next time, have a great day.